Good morning, you guys. It is Tuesday, which means it is time to talk travel. And this week, we're talking how to avoid flu and other illnesses while traveling, especially on an airplane. Why are we talking about this? Because yours truly has a sick house. <laughs> the flu finally hit us. Not me, not yet, fingers crossed. Uh, but my youngest, uh, who's 12 in seventh grade, we got the call yesterday from school saying that uh, we needed to come get her. She wasn't feeling well. And she came home and went right to sleep and within three hours started vomiting. So at any rate, got her right into the doctors because we know right now flu is a huge, huge deal. It's going all over the place. She told me when I picked her up that in her math class, only eight of 25 students were in the class. Eight of 25 in her class. So I thought this had run the course a couple weeks ago, but it's still running through, still hitting everywhere. I immediately got her to the doctor. We got the Tamiflu for her and, um, and some Zofran to stop the nausea. I picked up some of these for myself because I am so adamant. I do not want this sickness. Do not want this sickness. Got the disinfecting wipes for everything. Um, picked it up because, again, I, I'm like fingers crossed that I don't get it from her. She's quarantined in her room. Um, again, trying trying not to spread this nasty, nasty cold and flu virus. But it got me thinking, man, if I, I have a trip scheduled next Monday um, and I'm going to be on a flight. And the last thing I want is either to give this to somebody else or pick it up from somebody on a plane. And have you ever been on a plane where somebody's wearing one of these? And I remember they got so popular with the avian um, flu. Remember, boom, boom, boom. Um, and I always kind of thought, is that really extreme? Is that necessary? Um, but now, if it's going to keep me from getting it, I am by all means saying, please. I, I hope they hand these out at the airport, you know, as you check in and say, you know. But it got me thinking, there are other things you can do. So, and I was thinking also, even just, look, we had the Super Bowl. And and Pink sang the national anthem, and the next day it all came out that she had um, the flu. Do you remember that? And all I could think is, dude, whoever grabbed that microphone after her <laughs> probably has it. And how far along around that stadium? How many other people showed up with it? You know, when you pay thousands of dollars for a ticket and you don't really feel great that morning, it's not like you're going to stay home. So got me thinking about that. Um, the Olympic Games in South Korea, they start Thursday night. And I read this morning that the um, they're bringing in the South Korean military, like 900 members of the military to help with security because the security guards, more than 40 security guards for the games, uh, came down with the norovirus, sudden vomiting, diarrhea, all the stuff we don't like talking about. But so they tested all 1,200 and they're, they're benching a bunch of them. And can you even imagine getting so far, like as an athlete, being this incredible, getting to the pinnacle of your career, the Olympic Games, and then getting norovirus. Have you ever had that? It, I remember when it was spread through with cruise ships for a while. And I mean, you're down and out when, when you get something like that. I mean, as you are with the flu. So I kept thinking, what can I tell people for when they travel that will help them? So I pulled up a couple tips. Um, some of these are just from from my own um, background, some are from nurses that I know, and, and also just kind of poking around on the web. So um, <laughs> avoid unnecessary interactions. That kind of cracked me up. Um, you know, you have to talk to the gate agent. You have to hand them a piece of paper. Now, imagine these airport workers, have what they're facing. But, um, you know, but there's no reason you have to shake everybody else's hand that comes on the plane. So kind of avoid that. I've gotten to the point, even as I walk down stair railings, I will take my sleeve so that my hand doesn't have to touch anything. I'll use my sleeve to touch. Because I, even right now, <laughs> my daughter, she wanted a hug, and she wanted to hold my hand, and I'm like, nope, you can hold this. I love her, but I don't want to catch this, this, this nasty, nasty flu. Um, they say, of course, wear a face mask. And even that, you know, um, it, it's a challenge trying to breathe under this sometimes. It gets kind of hot. so. But it does limit the germs you're spreading, um, you know, if, if you already have it. I'm not sure how foolproof it is as far as protecting you, but I figure any kind of shield, anything you can put, any layer in between you and somebody who might be sitting next to you. Because if you ever sat down on a flight and the person next to you sneezes or you've got the kid in the row in front of you with the snot coming out, you're like, no, because you're breathing that recycled air in. So anyway, so, so avoid unnecessary interactions is one. So 
you know, avoid standing in tight or crowded lines um, if you can avoid it. You remember, like, as people board flights, and I don't know how how recently you've been to an, uh, a flight, but this is this is an American thing because when I fly in Europe, everybody doesn't crowd around the gate to get on the plane first. They just chill. They're like, okay. I mean, there's no like zone one, zone two. They call it. But everybody's not racing this whole herd mentality like we have in the States where I got to get on first. Um, it's kind of interesting. Now, I personally like to get on early because I always have a carry on and I want to make sure I can uh, fit it in the overhead bins. But at any rate, so that's kind of one tip is is not to be standing in the crowd waiting because you want as much distance again between everybody else. If somebody's going to cough or sneeze, you don't want them sneezing on you if you're right next to them. So that's one thing. Um, and opt for a window seat on your flight. This was interesting because I thought, well, what if you're touching something on the window? But they said it makes it much less likely that that the people walking by on the aisle, they may be sick and passing germs. So if they're walking by on the aisle, you're much more likely to be touched or your seat be touched and um, and the germs be passed back and forth. So I thought that was very interesting. Stay hydrated. Um, you know, if you have, you know, I, th I think because of the low humidity of air, um, air travel, it can dry you out and make you more vulnerable, easy for me to say. Um, so they say like bring a nasal spray on flights and drink plenty of water or hot tea to stay hydrated um, because it builds up uh, your natural, your body's natural defenses um, if you're not dehydrated. I thought that was interesting. Wipe down your seating area. Um, I, I know people who do this regardless. And I never have because I'm like, really? I mean, I've got clothes in between me or what have you. But here's the thing. And, and this to me was really, really interesting. When they clean the the plane in between flights, and I have been the person that had a layover and didn't get off the plane and, um, and kind of watched what happened in the meantime while we were sitting at the layover. They do not clean those planes very well. They are required to clean the bathrooms, but they don't wipe down every single seat or every armrest. And think about that. That's that to me, the tables, like the tray tables, the armrests. And I do remember this was a big story a couple years ago, not to touch the magazines. Because when people read the magazines, they say that's when, when they do germ tests, those magazines, all kinds of all kinds of germs and bacteria are in them. So don't don't pull the magazines out. Um, but also before you sit down, wipe it all down. Bring your handy dandy. <laughs> couple disinfectant wipes. <laughs> Lysol should sponsor this, right? Um, but anyway, bring bring the wipes, wipe it all down. The armrest, especially where your hands, somebody else's hands might have just been, and the tray table, if you're even going to touch it. Um, so so that's important. Um, I'm trying to think what else, you know, if, um, oh gosh, what, let me remember my, what the other tips were. I know like if you go in the bathroom, by all means, you definitely want, you know, to, to watch the contamination there. Um, you know, again, back to using a paper towel, if you're going to touch, uh, touch anything with that, you're going to need to wipe down. That's another good one. Um, these are, this, it's, for me, it's, it's that sort of, you know, it should be obvious tips, um, but you just don't know. And and these days, it used to be very, very easy to switch seats. You know, if you say the person who sits down next to you is already sniffling, whatever, you kind of roll your eyes and think, oh, God, I'm, I'm stuck now. Um, you don't, you can ask to move. It's just highly unlikely these days that there's even going to be room for you to be able to do that. So that's important to know. Um, if you have tips, let me know. Those are the big ones for me. Um, just, again, trying to. Oh, Angela, you're on. You said, I, yeah, they don't clean the bathrooms well either. Uh, not often. <laughs> I, and, and this is not a slam. Thank you, Cindy, for the good, the good prayers, for good health. Um, this is not a slam on airports. It's just, you know, there's a quick turnaround, and there's not so, not a whole lot of room um, for people, you know, or time for them to turn it around, clean it well, um, and the things, like I said, just the things that you find, um, again, in the seat back, um, I'm, and I hate even just putting my hand down in the seat pocket in front of me because you just don't know what that last person left. And, and again, being the person who sat on a plane during a layover where it, the flight was continuing on and a bunch of people got off, new people got on, I saw exactly what was clean and it wasn't a whole lot. Um, 
Angela says, don't touch the magazines in doctor's offices either. Absolutely. I think that's where I read what's the germiest place in, in the world. Doctor's offices, which makes total sense. But um, still people, you know, my doctor's office yesterday when we took my daughter in uh, for her flu diagnosis because I wanted to be sure, um, you know, they have a sick room and they have a well room. And all I could think is I need to send the sick room because if she has the flu, I don't want to contaminate other people. But if we're well, we're now sitting next to children who couldn't even sit up in the chairs. So I made I made my daughter pull her shirt up over her nose and whatever because we didn't have these yet. But all I could think is that's it. And when we went into, if you're wondering if you have the flu, the first thing, you know, before it really hits because she, um, you know, she had just the vomited once. And but but literally they said the first sign of this particular flu is utter exhaustion. Um, and by the time my daughter got back in the room with the doctor, she had to lie down on the exam table. She just couldn't even sit up. Um, so it's kind of pitiful. But she's got the medicine pumping in her, so we are we should be good. I'm, again, fingers crossed that I don't end up with it. But it is what it is, guys. I mean, you know, we, a lot of times we don't even know that people around us are sick. So I'm going to use these tips regardless. Um, and if you have others, definitely leave them for me on this on this list, and I will add more myself. So um, if you're traveling, stay safe. <laughs> oh, oh, another one was to, to open the air vents above, which I don't like doing because I felt like it blew air on me and made me cold, like a fan, you know. Um, but they said blowing or opening that and having it blow down on you keeps the germs moving, hopefully back. So um, maybe even keep it angled, not so much on you, but angled away from. Um, but at least it keeps the air moving and, and everything instead of settling right on top. So that was another good tip. But I'll share more as I find them and, and post this on the blog. If you guys want to look up the link, I'll add it as soon as the blog is posted today. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Keep traveling. Um, and I guess I'll see you next Tuesday on the next Time to Talk Travel Tuesday. Have a great one.